Thank you everyone. Now I am going to discuss about the first cycle impact assessment of Shopno project. And the impact assessment is being conducted by Bangladesh Institute of Development Studies. Before discussing about the impact assessment of Shopno, I want to discuss about the Shopno project. Shopno stands for Extending Women's Ability for Productive New Opportunities. This project is being undertaken by the local government division and Ministry of LGRD. And this project is being supported by UNDP. The aim of the project is to lift the poor out of poverty and also help them sustain with the higher income level in the absence of the project. Here you know that here is two points. One is lifting the poor out of poverty and that is the sustainability with the higher income level in the absence of the project of the beneficiary. If you compare these two points, you will find that the first one is very easy as compared with the second one because in the second one we are talking about the sustain sustainability with the higher income of the beneficiary. And the project duration is 18 months. The type of the project is public work based graduation model. You know the literacy of graduation model is very thin. That's, that's why I concrete here two sets of models. One is direct access transfer program, another is public work based graduation model. Direct access transfer program was first introduced by the BAC in 1985 with the partner of government and WFP and the project name was BGF that means vulnerable group feeding. After successfully completed of the project, this project is SCLAF and the name was IGDGD Income Generation for Vulnerable Group Development Program. Then TOP CLP Shiri program was introduced in our country. TOP means targeted ultra 4 and CLP source livelihood program and another project is Shiri also introduced in our country as a asset transfer graduation model. Then we work Rupa means rural empowerment opportunity of for public asset. And the Rupa was the pinner in public work-based graduation model in our country, which started in 2010 as and was implemented in 41 Upazala of 6 districts. The Shopno project is built on Rupa with little modification. As like the length of the work fair of Ripa was 24 months as opposite to 80 months in Shopno. Size of women Q group per union was 30, 30 in Ripa project while it is it varies from 12 to 36 in Shopno. And union workers is also an innovation in Shopno. Now I am going to discuss about the impact assessment. The impact assessment targeted beneficiary was distressed and vulnerable rural women in Bangladesh. The purpose of the survey is to gather, inform gather information on the exposed social economic condition of the women and evaluate the effectiveness of the program by comparing it to the baseline, baseline data. So we have the baseline data. It is easy for us to compare the uh, to find out the effectiveness of the program by comparing with the baseline one and the methodology was randomized quantum trial so you have so you have two groups one is treatment another is control group so uh, in in the impact assessment of shopno here 800 beneficiary is selected randomly selected as a treatment group and another 400 is selected as a control group so total beneficiary is 1200 in two districts 
and 14 opuzela in our country and the tools they use the structure questionnaire that's been household survey they conduct in the field and conducted some focus group discussion that's been LGD and also conducted some KII yes. that's mean key informed interview different types of information they collected considering their indicator as like demographic and social economic information they collected from the beneficiary as like the household size family headed household age of the respondent education of the respondent occupation and marital, marital status of the beneficiary age distribution dependency ratio of the family in how many income earner in their family and also the main income earner of their family also also collect the information about the income household per capita income additional income beneath the project that's mean the iga quality or livestock waste payment income or if the beneficiary have the uh, a small business and also they collect the expenditure as like the expenditure of the household before after of the intervention also collect the assets and land holding information from the beneficiary that means size of their own land homestead land cultivated land land under lease values of land livestock quality fisheries missionaries household durable pcs metal etc and also collect the information about their trees also collect the information about their housing and fuel basically their household condition it is well furnished or not is it paka or semi paka and what types of uh, fuel they use uh, for their cooking as like gas electricity straw wood coal cow dung etc they also collect the <coughs> food security information from the respondent as like how many times they taking their meal one or two or three times per day or if they have any food deficiency food deficiency by seasonally by seasonality you know that we have 12 season so we know from the literacy that two months two months is very our beneficial suffering two months out of 12 months more than out of 12 months by seasonality and they also collect the information of coping with natural disaster what types of uh, action that we can before after and during the natural disaster here i mentioned five type of coping state strategy here one is blowing blowing asset sale or mortgage sale of labor really for assistance and temporary migration basically here they want to know about their coping mechanism of the beneficiary then the collect the household household health status basically the women health status how many times they are sick and what type of measurement they take during the sick where did they where did they go and their body max index measure their body max index their health condition in general and also collect the information of their dietary index they also collect the information of water and sanitation as like the source of drinking water condition of their sources of water and their sanitary and hygiene the status of the beneficiary they also collect the information of women empowerment as an aspiration they collect the information about the control over personal income and assets decision making and influence on and family income and savings if they have any uh, if they uh, basically do they have their any influence on on family income or savings they ask and collect the information from their respondent they also collect the information of their full control over the immovable and movable properties household asset i already mentioned in early section decision making new income uh, earning activities 
and if they have any involvement and decision with any income generating activities this type of information they collect from the respondent also collect the information about the mobility as freedom basically they ask do they have permission to go outside of their community and also collect the information about the self-confidence and self-esteem basically <coughs> ask about their future plan for life how opt optimistic are you in implementing you your future plan and also ask <coughs> and also ask Do you think the goal you set two years ago are accomplished or not? And also collect the training and life skill data from the respondent. Now I am going to discuss about the major statistics they use for analysis the data. Different types of statistic analysis they use to assess the beneficiary uh, to assess the effectiveness of the program as like the Deed regression analysis, difference in different coefficients, percentage, percentile, p values, mean median, confidence interval, odd ratio, incident rate, and statistical significance. And in the below table, you will find I keep some example what types of information they analyze, what types of statistics they use to analyze the impact assessment here i want to uh, mention that household year yearly income in taka you found that in the you have the baseline information and inline information according to the control and treatment group and also calculated the different and different coefficient you will find that in the below table In step 2, here is uh, noted that 67% beneficiary income are higher increase. In control group and in the treatment group, you will find that 231% beneficiary income higher increase. And if you see in the different in different coefficient, you will find that around 40,000 40, taka contribution by the Shopno project. And the average per capita yearly income, if you consider this variable, you will find 17,000 taka contribution by the Shopno project. They also use the regression analysis which you will find in the detail analysis section now i am going to going to present a uh, present a table uh, about the sources of income how we collect the sources of income from the beneficiary here you find that five types of variable i added upon the table one is os payment os payment means means the uh, which which payment they got from the shop no project graduation bonus that means after 18 months of complete uh, eight, eight, <coughs> after eight, after completed of the project they will get a graduation bonus which is around 22000 taka and the third one is savings that means roshka this is mandatory savings for the beneficiaries and the fourth one is return income from investment if they invest any kinds of uh, money to uh, for IGO or uh, for the different uh, different business purpose this income will be added will be put it in this table and also income from other sources if they have any other sources to uh, income some money then will be collected and put it this figure in this table 
so this is the uh, total table for income for collecting the sources of income and i put some way forward that's been recommendation made when i reading the impact impact assessment of the shopna project i want to recommend it this point for the shopna project that is the developed beneficiary database including asx types of service providing etc this will be the online and offline and i also want to suggest to develop household survey conduct basically conducted household survey after three or four or six months later to know the project progress i want to suggest a prepare a checklist for collecting monthly information as like their sources of income and their expenditure and also develop a map by addressing their gps location and you can also put their basic information in the map this is more representative maybe and i also want to suggest to develop web based data collection platform as like we can use kobo wana cpms recap this is basically the non represent database we can also use the rdbsm that means relational database management system we can also suggest for post survey to know the progress and sustainability after end of the project two or three months later we can conduct a survey to assess the sustainability of their income and we need to develop a data collection method and share it plan and we need to share with the senior management thank you very much if you have any question please let us know